Hello, this time we're going to take a look at my uh, Super Nintendo. This is the uh, North American model, uh, released in uh, August uh, 1991. As you can see, it's a little bit uh, chewed and a bit moth-eaten and uh, starting to get yellow. So, um, on a recent trip, I picked up this, a uh, clear shell. Um, so, uh, decided to purchase that to uh, transfer the uh, guts of it over from one to the other really like the look of this I thought it uh, I'd seen a few online um, was quite surprised actually how much these things cost they are good quality and now that I've actually you know taken a look at them and had a play with them and see what the quality they are quite well made but this one cost me $139 and uh, I bought it from uh, the New York game shop uh, video games New York uh, 202 East Street this is also um, the European style uh, SNES um, so thought the same again this one's starting to go yellow looking a bit manky so I decided to go with the smoked grey case for this one so I picked these two up from that shop got them back over here across the pond and it's time to uh, get them swapped over this one is particularly beaten up um, screws various screws missing various screws been glued over and the system's been mackled back together um, you know, it's been a long time in my collection, but it's not been one I've had on display. I just really bought it for spares when I was in the U in the United States, you know, a long, long while ago. Um, I do have a, a, a model that is quite nice and, and looks quite nice, but this one just was kept for spares, really. As you can see, this one uh, hadn't got a screw in at all and was just uh, just literally glue. So uh, once I got this apart, obviously we can start to disassembling, have a look at the board, make sure the board's okay. Um, swap over all the parts um, a few of the parts that you do have to swap over like the um, controller port at the front and some of the um, buttons on the top and stuff like that I have taken those out and um, retro brighted them because um, you can see there the top edge of that front controller port um, is just starting to yellow so I decided to uh, unclip that and uh, just run it through the old retro bright process just to try and crisp it up make it look a bit nicer there's not a lot of difference between the two models when you actually get them side by side. There's a few little basics, um, but nothing majorly different. This particular model um, ran all the way up till 1999 and originally um, was sold for about $200. And the uh, sales number were a, a slightly shy of about 50 million units sold worldwide. So pretty, pretty impressive specs. The most um, popular game on the system was um, Super Mario, which was the pack-in game. Decided to move that little box away. Um, I was going to try and clean that top up because it has gone quite rusty, but um, as you'll see from a bit later on, I decided to discard the top because it did look quite nice looking at the actual circuit board rather than looking at that rusty top or spraying it with some sort of silver paint. So that's it. That's us extracted... Um, all the guts from the system, as you can see, it's, it was in a pretty tired mess. Um, you know, literally everything trying to hold it together. So um, it really did um, want to be changed over this. Once I got this, um, these top bits off, these don't look too bad. So I didn't retro bright this particular part. I did have to. Um, there's a white part underneath this main enclosure that um, wouldn't slide in the new case. It was for the reset switch. So I did have to file down a few bits on this just to get it to work and the bits to transfer over. There were some slight dif you know, differences between the two cases. So I'm not sure whether there's di whether there were different models of this and um, there were some differences in, in the fabrication. Um, there was a few um, bits and bobs that I just had to file down or little, little tabs to cut off. So we'll see, see those coming up in a little bit. These little bits are a little bit fiddly to come out, but uh, nothing, no major problems. And like I say, they went off for retro brighting. Uh, I even did retro bright this flap. I don't think it needed, really needed the flap. Uh, that was fairly okay, but um, the um, the two buttons definitely did, and the controller port, absolutely certainly, they needed to be done. So here's the new shell. Um, for some reason, you don't get this bit. Um, don't know why, but it, doesn't, it looks pretty cool. The fact that it, it, it is its original colour. Uh, the two little uh, screw threaded standoff bits I've only got one of them on this and one of them seems to be missing I was going to try and put this heat shield in the, the interference shield and whether it's a heat shield as well I don't know but um, I think it's just an interference shield so 
I decided not to put it in. I think it was nicer being able to see the circuit board from both sides. So this is the board screwed in. Uh, there's that little board with a rusty top. So obviously discarded that rusty top just to get rid of it and uh, not have to bother over trying to spray it or you know, clean it up. Uh, that's the top it all uh, screwed back together and the bits all retro brighted. So we're not far off completion on this particular unit. So before we do the grand reveal, uh, I'm going to take the other one apart and uh, I think it's pretty much the same procedure. So it means this is pretty much the same as the other console you've taken apart. The only real difference is um, this one has security bits on it, the, you know, the game bits, if that's how you, uh, some people call them different bits, but it's like a security bit, so you need a special screwdriver to undo this one as opposed to the other um, Super Nintendo, which just used ordinary um, Phillips screws. With the lid off, as you can see, it's slightly cost redu you know, cost reduced model. There's a few things, the mechanism seems simpler. Um, you know, there doesn't seem to be as much plastics and stuff like that. You know, the, the basics of the of the board look pretty good, but um, you know, it's it's you can tell that they've obviously saved money, re, re, you know, fine tune the design, but the basics are still the same. So uh, let's get it to bits and get it to obviously swapped over onto the new uh, into the new case. I may at some point um, decide to do like an RGB mod or, um, you know, I haven't really looked into the mods. The, these particular units I always used to play on a on a, a CRT. So as we all know, CRT is a lot more forgiving. Um, so I may well find, see, see what solutions are out there for this so that I can plug it into a modern day TV. The problem with emulation and stuff like that, these machines aren't really needed. The emulation is so good. Um, you, you find that most of the time you don't really need to play these old machines. This this process, what I'm doing now, is really just to bring these machines back to life, and not me looking at them sat on a shelf, that you know, or shoved in a, in a in a bucket. I thought you know there's no point in them being in the collection, other than for spares, and they seem too good to chuck. So um, as you can see from the arrow, these are the little plastic pegs that seem to stand up. So whether the board was slightly different in a different revision, I don't, you know, on the actual motherboard, I don't know. But I had to trim off those little plastic. They were almost like little pegs that stood up, like location pegs, and the motherboard wouldn't sit flush to the plastic case. I had to trim them back. Once they were out of the way, the motherboard sat in, you know, in the plastic nice and flat, and I you know, managed to get on and uh, screw it all down and get it, get it nice and secure. It was quite tight. The, the screws going into the new plastic are very, very tight. Um, almost to the point that you're scared that you're going to snap something or break some of the posts. Nothing ever did. The plastic did seem to be quite pliable and forgiving. Um, so I was quite pleased with the fact that uh, I didn't break any of the standoffs or any of the posts or anything in there. Everything Once the screw had been in and out, it was fine. Um, so I did have to have a couple of goes on this particular one, like you say, with those little plastic standoffs just became a right pain in the arse. So once I got it all back together, you know, it's pretty simple. There's nothing really more to it. Just joining the shells up. You do get the screws to join the shell. You don't get any of the internal screws or anything like that, but you do get the sh a set of screws um, to join the two halves of the shell together. Um, so there it is. It's pretty much back together. Just um, pop on the release mechanism for the cart. And we're pretty much good to go with the um, top casings on both of them. So there we go. These are the units completed. As you can see, I think that really does come across well um, without all the, the heat shields or interference shields that were fitted to the machine. Um, it looks nice to be able to see the guts of it and you know, see the internals. I think that's the whole point of a clear shell. So I'm really pleased with the way that's turned out. The smoked grey one, I did leave the heat shield on for the smoked grey one, um, only because you, you can't really see a lot through the smoked you know, uh, plastic, it, it didn't really reveal a massive, so I did decide to leave, the, it didn't have a bottom heat shield, but there was a top um, interference shield, so I decided to leave that one on, so all working, it all uh, functions, the only thing I've got left to do with that grey case is uh, there's a little sticker to put on the top, at the back, uh, but there you go, the finished result. Really pleased with them. Now, instead of being a manky load of crap, um, it literally is what it is. It's it's turned from literally bin fodder or trash. It's um, now a treasure that's something I can be proud to display in my collection. So really pleased with the result. It was worth travelling 4,000 miles to get them. Um, I'm sure I probably could have got them closer, but it's nice that uh, I managed to bring them back and uh, enjoy the journey and the people in New York at that particular video game shop. So anyway. If you got this far, thanks for watching and we'll catch you again in the next video. Bye for now.